All right, so today's project was a burn bowl. Let's get my coal fire going. Um, it's a fairly sizable stump. The goal is to get um, 16 ounces of water uh, to be held and then um, additionally for it to boil. Um, so the best way to do that is to stone boil in a container like this. But first things first, right, right is you gotta have um, you gotta have your piece of wood. I'm using green twigs to hold the the uh, charcoal in place, and this charcoal is hardwood. Um, and so then to to make it burn, as opposed to just sitting it there, the overall goal is to try to hit the base of it. Um, because I'm going to get the, the actual stump to catch on fire. If I remove this right now, you'll note that that's already smoldering. And bring this one in. closely what's happening is the bite the, the actual stump is catching on fire I'm using a larger piece um, simply to get a, a wider girth to this uh, that way I don't have to go so deep um, and then um, be able to burn my burn my bowl so we'll check back with this uh, that's where we're at right now and I'll keep you updated again this is a this is a piece of um, I don't remember I think it's a piece of maple uh, in fact, I'm pretty sure it's maple. I haven't been cutting down but two different trees. Uh, fairly dry, not totally green. Uh, hardwood. Uh, this is oak and maple as well. And then, like I said, my green, my green twigs in here to get it to go. Um, later, what we'll do is I'll actually put on the side some clay. Um, and I'll actually learn this from a Cherokee gentleman that was doing a, a boat. And so what we'll do is we'll put in some clay or some mud uh, and the purpose is to keep from burning on that that specific spot So it keeps uh, and kind of guides your burn and burn patterns All right, we'll check back with in just a little while um, We're gonna get a little deeper, but right now that's just kind of the uh, the top of it. Next question is how do you know when it's time to get new coals? Well, these are starting to Not put off as much heat as I want to So at that point I can dump them out Put them into my fire and then I have to take and get that out so I use I've got a piece of flint I'm just take and scrape it so I've got all this ash in there Now you may ask, isn't that counterproductive because now some of this is still on fire and, and that's true. So it could be, so you have to be careful when to do that and when not. If you can't blow any of this to be on fire or to, to burn anymore, um, then certainly scrape and, and move along. Um, but if there's a, you see, I've already got a depth in there, um, fairly, you know, about, an, I'd say probably about a half inch. Um, once you get a depth to it, then uh, you'll want to scrape it out anyway to try to get you some fresh wood uh, to start burning. So that's the, the point of that. Okay, check back in a little bit. A little deeper into it, you can see I've got bigger pieces. Uh, you can also see I've got the mud on the side as well. And the reason being is because it started getting real thin right there. Uh, and all that's going to do is just stop it from, from spreading or stop it from burning out even more. Uh, that's damp red clay. Now, one thing that I didn't specify is you'll notice how big these pieces are now, uh, and they're actually on fire. So what I've done is basically switched out coals, which were the top part, uh, for big chunks of charcoal that are actually on fire now. So it burns a little bit longer, it burns a little deeper. And all I'm doing is just kind of blowing at the base of it kind of get it uh get the fire stoked back up so to speak so same thing i got going there i got going here the difference is the other one's just a little bit bigger so i can keep using that to feed this one um, when it goes down and they don't uh, burn anymore then i'll switch them out uh, one other little piece that i've got 
um, that I'm using, um, and that's only for directional, is actually dead poke sally. I punched out the uh, the middle of it. I probably can't get a real good picture of it, but uh, poke sally, poke salad, poke berry. Um, I'm not sure what other words they are, um, and I don't remember the Latin word for it. Basically, it's some things that the birds eat. You can't eat any part of it. Um, and uh, we used to throw them at each other and stain each other's clothes. So uh, what that does is help me to guide it uh, and get directional flow to it. Um, the difference in that is, or the one thing about that is, or the caution I should say is, uh, be careful because you can get lightheaded. All right, we're at um, we're at about two hours now. I'm probably somewhere in the neighborhood of about two inches deep. Uh, if I go ahead and scrape it out, um, then uh, what happens is that that's going to give me a good bit, and I'm probably looking at somewhere between uh, six to eight ounces of water already, uh, being able to hold that. All right, we'll check back soon. Back down to smaller coals now. Um, the reason being is because I need to shape it out. You'll see how it's getting towards the rim. I already did some mud on it. Um, but I just need to do a little bit more. Probably got about another quarter inch to go down and I'll have, uh, I'll have enough for two cups. One little caution about blowing with a reed. Didn't think about it earlier. Um, do not inhale while you're blowing with a reed or a straw or a uh, pocket bellows because uh, that heat will go into your throat and it will burn you. Okay folks, so here's what we did while the, um, while the camera was off. We actually took and finished burning it out. Um, pretty deep, still a little warm in there. You can see a little bit of smoke. Um, the uh, hardest part or the biggest part was actually going in and scraping out. You can see some of the scrapes in there. And then I took some leaves and some water and just kind of uh, dusted out a bunch of it. A majority of that comes down to the fact that I'd be eating ash or drinking ash. Not a big deal. Uh, the old adage is white if you're tight, black if you're slack. Um, as far as the charcoal and ash goes, um, as far as your digestive system. So there's another little tip for free. All right. So what we've got is 16.9, 16.9 fluid ounces. This should hold. Um, the main thing is making sure you know, ahead of time, but should hold the entire 16 ounces uh, with no issues. And then the question comes down to, okay, well, how do I boil this? Uh, if this was water that was unsafe to drink, how would I boil it? And so what I've done is I would take stones, bricks, rocks, and put them in my water to get it to boil. So we're going to do that now. One, there's two, and then I got another couple in here. And the reason I'm using bricks is uh, many of you know I'm in a neighborhood, so um, rocks is not exactly the easiest thing to find. So you can see how that's getting there, it's steaming. I'll go ahead and pull this one back out. What a man, yeah, uh, it was cool. Come on, Brick. And she gave me that one, and then right here. That's the one I just pulled out, sorry guys. The whole point is, you see we're starting to get bubbles there. The whole point is to get in enough, um, enough heat in there to boil the water. And son of a gun, it is definitely warm. Um, is it boiling? No. But will it be shortly? Yes. So now what I've done is I've got another small one I'm going to stick in there. that work it's magic and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull those out and I've got these two great big ones in there so that should get the the temperature up high enough so while I'm doing this I'm just letting you know um, time wise how long did it take 
Uh, took me since two o'clock. It's now uh, 5.30, so three and a half hours to get this big of a bowl going. Um, it's not something you can do quick. Let's pull this back out, put it back in the fire. Uh, and typically you would have your fire going constantly uh, and just rotate your rocks. There's not a problem with that. Uh, in my case, I know this is the last thing I'm doing for today. Um, so, didn't necessarily need it. Uh, need all the bricks boiling 15 times. So, let me see, we got it going there. Uh, we got enough bubbles going. If I flip the brick over, it should give us a nice white boil happening right there. Can I let it get a little bit temperature wise? Yeah. Um, if I got a bigger dish, then sure, I put in two of them. So guys, this should put us way over the top. There we go. Um, so you can see it is definitely simmering, sizzling, and, and boiling, um, which I think qualifies for what my task, my duty was. I uh, basically need to get 16 ounces of water to boil, 14 ounces to boil. Uh, I put in 16. You can definitely see it's boiling, especially inside the brick. Um, so I would say mission accomplished. So guys, just be careful. Uh, but this is something that would help you uh, in the long run. Just sit down and So in the long run, uh, this can help you out in a pinch. It can help you out if you needed it. Um, should you not have a, uh, a proper container um, or, you know, you saw me, I didn't use a knife at all. Um, so I was able to go in and do it that way. So guys, that's, that's it. Um, again, just a little test. I do thank you for your, uh, your likes, your subscribes, your tweets, your retweets. Uh, hey, don't forget about our contest. Uh, link will be at the end of the video, so don't forget about that. Subscribe and comment on the video. Uh, I've already gotten in, uh, gotten some folks uh, in contact with me about some great uh, video, or sorry, some great um, prizes. Hey guys, thanks again. Appreciate all you do. Until then, use your instincts to survive. Thanks for watching. Drink it. It's gonna be hot. All right. Definitely hot. But it works, so hot, 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 hot. Uh, it'd be great for soup, I guess.